Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIII 2, everyone. We found a big time gear after Silver the Hedgehog told us that we could find Pinky, and we're gonna go in, I guess, because why not? Because that thing doesn't look evil at all. Are you sure you're ready? I mean, there weren't really much of a game if we didn't do it. There might be no yeah. Back. And I don't, I don't think people really want to watch the classic adventures of Sarah and her little munchkins. It sounds quite funny, it's just like, there'll be no point of return, it's like, but the, the game's entire structure is that you can kind of go where you want, so... <laughs> it's yeah. a big old fat lie. Well, doesn't 15 do that, like, in the early parts of the game, where it's like, you may not be able to come back here for a time, it's like, bitch, I go where I want. Yeah, you can just go, it's weird. <laughs> now, they used to do stuff like that, like, in the original Tales of Symphonia game, when you go from Silverot to Tetheala, which is the second part of the game, you can't get back to the first one for a long time. Yeah, it was the difference for a long time, but they try and put it down as a, you know, you can't come back here again, it's like, no, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> yeah. They did that in Kingdom Hearts as well, it's like, we'll never be able to come back here again, and yet, Kyrie comes back. Back. I don't know. Dude, come on now. Like, if you're gonna say you can't come back forever, mean forever. <laughs> you're not gonna say goodbye? There's no need. We already have. So oh, dear. <laughs> Lightning's knife. It's been sharpened and cleaned. Oh, shit, I was caught doing something gay! He kind of comes across like the kind of person who would hate to the oh stupid gay shit. And it's like, dude, you don't even know what gay means, do you? <laughs> it's like I don't think that word. Also, little right thing there. Say, Aww, kitty. It, some, someone gave him a good brushing. It's like the cat's a girl, Sarah. You said so earlier in the game. Yep. Go on. Uh, God, God forbid we we act like we actually did anything for you. Uh, uh, uh. So you wouldn't lose it. Yeah, because we didn't do this for you or anything, you know. Nah, your feelings are stupid. Cat's like, that's bullshit. It's time for me to go. I don't know what's waiting out there in the future. I have to admit, I don't understand why they were so reluctant to just say like, uh, we'll help out, goodbye. Maybe it's just because he was so much he was like, that guy's not from the future, he's a fake. Ah, Rue, shut up. Oh, LeBro, you're gonna regret saying that. <laughs> For reasons that aren't going to be apparent until the end of the game, but whatever. Oh dear. Oh dear. You know what you're doing, right? Well, I can't say that I do. Oh, that's reassuring. First time I've opened a gate myself. Oh no. I guess we'll just have to find out. He's like, trying. I don't know. What about Sarah? I'll protect her. I mean, come on, haven't you seen me in Spirited Away? I protected a little girl. Never to let her come to harm. Trust me. Gado, stop being a bitch. Yeah, Knuckles, chill. Oh, that... I am getting such Sora vibes from Noel right now. Well, every single Final Fantasy character since 7 has been designed by Tetsuya Nomura. So, you know, the guy who made Kingdom Hearts, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> oh, shit! I believe I can fly. You don't, you, don't need to oh, well. you don't need to believe they are. Okay, so would it be more like pixie dust then? I don't know. <laughs> Bye! Boop. We did it. You believed in a promise. You believed in a future you could not see. I will keep fighting here at the end of the world. I know you will come. Uh oh. I believe in you. It's who fuck who? You. Hmm. The mystery deepens, doesn't it? Hey, friends. It's the Historia Crux. The crossroads of the time continuum. So this is how you were able to travel backwards from the future? Right. Just floated through the... Yeah, you did space. do that. 
basically. And then fell. And, now it's your turn. and so you go, oh fuck, I didn't expect this to work! <laughs> Alright, so as a. Uh, I'll explain that. That's the Historia Crux, which essentially acts as the um, location select. So as you go through, you unlock new time periods and new locations to go through. Um, you can choose to go through them at will. Um, finding these gates that you saw um, on a, on a Grand Pulse just there allows you to unlock new areas that act as side locations and also places that don't continue the main story. Uh, we're only going to be doing the main story, even though there is a lot of side quests and stuff in this game. One dude show that goes... Cody, I'm recording. Can you speed up? <laughs> I was talking about that girl that said, uh, how about that? Yeah. You know she went back on the fucking, uh, old dude show. Yeah. I just made you more fans. No, she just made herself look stupid. You weren't nothing before I came on. Wow. My brother referring to the how about dad girl went back on a Dr. Phil and apparently said that he wasn't shit without her. Uh, I don't pay attention to crappy memes, sorry. Eh. It was funny for like two seconds and then it got old. So yeah, as I said, we're only going to be doing the main story content of the game, you know, there's a lot of side quests and extra locations to visit. Um, some of the extra stuff we'll be doing after this will be some of the DLC that fleshes out some bits near the end a lot better. Um, but we'll get to that point. No, none of the side quests have anything to do with the actual um, story-based, does it? Uh, some of them have like some minor relevance, but they're not nothing major. So, okay. Anyway, here we are starting. Oh, are we gonna meet Saz in this game? Is Saz in this game? Saz is in this game. Yay! Have everyone from the original is pretty much in this game at some point. What is it with Final Fantasy and booty shorts? It's just, it's just good, I guess. I do not understand this. <laughs> okay. We, ma we made it. Well, that was a better landing than the last two. Yeah, I mean, falling out from the sky in a meteorite, I suppose that would uh, not be a good way, way to start. <laughs> this is Cocoon. Yeah, Hello? We're in Cocoon. This is how Cocoon looks for me. I'm gonna be such a fanboy right now! That's right, I forgot. This is your first time here. Yep. Yes, it is. I ain't no shit! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, about that giant hand. Um. Um. Bad things happening. Uh, yeah. Have we- we've gone back in time, haven't we? Uh, we've gone forwards. We've gone forward in time. Yes. Oh shit, let's go! Uh -oh. Well, let's see how we do. An arc? <laughs> yeah, and not looking to shake hands, I'm guessing. Well, you're not <laughs> wrong. He's not, but- Oh! <laughs> no! Well! He kind of changed to Sonic in that particular instance. Is this a joke? How could someone like you cause the destruction of our world? <laughs> uh... right, anyway, uh, kind of the last major fight um, before we end up switching over to the New Game Plus profile. Uh, the introduction to this level and this entire fight and everything related to certain pieces do... You, if you do a New Game Plus, I'll load a new save and try and redo an old... Um, level, it doesn't show them, which is weird, so that's the reason I'm playing a new game right now. Uh, also, a new mechanic they've put in here are the wounding damage. Uh, basically, it reduces your max HP, and if you don't heal it using special potions, you can never heal back to full health. So that's a Oh, thing. I hate when games do that! So it, it's only very slight. Most of the time, it's not really an issue. It's just like an extra mechanic, like, hey, all that stuff, uh, probably should uh, deal with that. And th there's very few enemies that do any kind of lasting wound damage. It's only like about 15 HP at max that I deal with in most enemies. And eventually when I get to the main game, I'll be doing so much damage anyway, they won't get a chance, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to 
trying to think a couple of games that did that. I know Dragon Age Origins did that, where if um if one of your characters died and you had to resurrect them, they had like broken bones and shit that would give them stat uh, reductions, and that always annoyed me because you always had to make sure you had like um, bandage and repair kits and stuff like that. And it just took up space in your inventory. I'm like, why are you doing this? The 15 does it as well. If you get like lose all your HP, you've got like a maximum that decreases that you can't heal mm -hmm. back from unless you use elixirs and stuff. Yeah, Yay. and then you, of course, you've got the uh, the royal arms that take the HP away anyway. Yeah, so it's from that little cinematic action, we've been granted a bonus. So Sarah does more damage with her magic, and I do more, and Null does more damage with her physical attacks. So, like, the cinematic action just kind of like, if you do this correctly, you'll get some good stuff happening. Woohoo! So here's another one. Whoa, dude. <laughs> Holy shit, no, you're good at this. <laughs> I'm walking on sunshine. Whoa. Oh, he's walking on something. It's not invisible, that's just a blatant lie, I can see him. Well... Uh they have, they do, it's kind of like in most games where they say it's invisible, but you still have to be able to see something of it. You know. The, the only game that recently has done, like, actual true invisibility is with an Overwatch when you play a Sombra. Like, to the enemy team, when you use your stealth, you are literally invisible, like, no one can see you. So, mm. it's, that's the only game of recent memory, I know that actually does it properly, everything else is just like a shimmer or something. Yeah, the, it's well when they do it, you have to. It's usually an enemy that does it, so you have to be able to see something. Yeah. Oh. Otherwise, it would. Oh, what the fuck? I remember having to kill you in thirteen. You are not a fun boss fight. Oh God! Don't tell me this is who I think it is. Hostile located. Engage it well. Oh boy. No, they're on our side. He was still an asshole though. He's dead. I know he's dead, but dealing with him was a pain! Yeah, so he's not gonna be here. Oh good, okay. He, yeah, that dead people can't do that. Oh right, we went forward in time. Sorry, I keep thinking we went backwards. No. No, oh, we went forward a couple of years. Time travel is bullshit! It it tells you on the menu of it says, oh we were at 3 AF, now we're in five. Forwards. Do you really? I was paying attention to my brother. I didn't see that. Don't pay attention to your idiot brother. Pay attention to this. Silly. <laughs> that probably is sound advice. <laughs> well, whatever that yeah. was, we did it. That was exciting. <gasps> Guess it's over. Huh? You think? Hmm. It's the army. Go, go. Uh, they... Sarah, the army were not yeah. your friends. But she was frozen in crystal. She didn't realize that. No, oh, look at Mog hiding. Aww. Aww. Eh? Whee! I'm happy. All right, moving on. On what? Potential suspects in the unsanctioned activation of Atlas. Come with me. And no funny business. No. Look at the rat. The no. Baron wants him. No funny business. No. <laughs> Treated like criminals. But it's just a misunderstanding. Stick to the truth and we'll be okay. Dude, and that's never the case. Ever. Okay. What do you make of that paradox thing, Noel? What do you think they were talking about? Weirdness near your village when the meteorite fell? Probably the same kind of thing. Alright. Yeah. Helpful. You. God. I'm just a poor little girl behind these bars, huh? It's like, if I bend over and show you my butt, will you let us out? You ain't even got a butt. I'm hungry! I, <laughs> <laughs> I want something to eat! <laughs> I'm hungry! This is not the time. <laughs> you two came up on the Grand Elevator? Huh? The Grand what? Sarah, what's he talking about? 
He could mm -hmm. be talking about the elevator that's supposed to connect Cocoon and Pulse, but it's still being built. It's going to be finished next year. No oh, shit. <laughs> what? Time travel, dude. Is this the future? Yeah. No kidding. Is it? Did we move forward in time? I'd say two years have passed, had a guess. Since what was scheduled for next year has already been filled. Well explained, no. Sim uh, simple mathematics. Uh, Who the fuck is this? <laughs> and she's like, ow. <laughs> thought she wasn't gonna keep. I don't, thought she wasn't gonna move. <laughs> Alyssa. I heard you apprehended our two observers. Alyssa. I am. <laughs> so, you know, you can let my friends go now. <laughs> That's not Why do true. I don't know who you are. I have a question. Since we moved forward in time, is the Sarah from this time still here, or did we technically vanish for two years? No, we vanished. So how does she know us? She doesn't. That's the thing. So we're gonna be like, uh, why the fuck are you doing this? <laughs> Who are you? Well, I, I mean, I don't know. I didn't know how what time physics happened in this particular world. Yeah, Maybe they use multiverse effect, I don't know. Well, multiverse does, is due to different realities, not different time periods. This is literally just like, so. if you leave a time period and appear somewhere else, you've gone from that time period. Yeah. It's not like you're meeting yourself. It's not like that. Yeah, I've seen the Lilo and Stitch episode with that shit. I know how, to, I know how this works. Yeah, but, but there's, there's also an interesting application of time stuff to this particular game that... Loads of people say like, oh, how does that make sense? But it's actually like a theory of time travel um, regarding the consequences and how things change and stuff. That's quite... I haven't really seen it being used in a lot of other media, so... I'll explain it when it happens, but, you know. Nope! You might not want to say that so loudly when he's behind you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who are you a friend of Sarah? <laughs> she just said no, stupid. Huh? Okay, then. Right this way, please. Get back here. Can we call this chick Dits? Dits. I'm sorry. I don't apologize, she is a bit of a ditz. <laughs> Who is this chick? I recognize the voice. Further into the ruins. Here, take this communicator and keep it with you Let's at all see. times. Look that up real quick. So I'm curious. Yeah? Just okay, give her a salute, no, like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> You mean through the gate? Yes, it is a kind of gate. It links to another world, doesn't it? Close enough, I guess. <laughs> so basically, helping us out was almost like part of your research. But you still have questions. I do have questions. I love how they're in the rain, but they never look like they're getting wet. Oh, it was the days of the PS. Look at that. It's the days of the PS3. You know, you could only do so much. <laughs> Oh, did he say something assholeish? I missed it. No, he's just offering to help no because that's all Noel does. Uh, oh, we'll do this. We'll we'll kill the giant. We'll do everything. Hey. Let's see. What else have you played, dear? Oh, you've not been much. I... Oh, that's why I knew her. She's Martell and Tabitha in Tales of Symphonia. So always li why. always links to Tales games. <laughs> <laughs> always, always. Uh, so as I was saying on the Historia Crux menu, there's three different kinds of gates that you can use to progress through the game. Uh, you can also change who is uh, in control. Um, so I'm going to do that, and so I can play as Noel. Um, just giving you a little idea of how the equipment menu works. Um, Crystarium. Might as well show how this works briefly. 
because yeah, I'm never going to do this in the main game because I'm already at max level, but it, it works in the same way as the old one. You press a button, you spend points, and you earn abilities and bonuses depending on which things you choose, so... That's just kind of it. You can upgrade different things individually. It's a lot more um, free. It's not like in tiers like the old one was. You can just progress at your own state. Um, you get bonuses for activating the larger crystals and other stuff and things like that, and it's actually very easy. Um, but you also have to do it in a certain order so you can get the max parameters out of it all. But, you know, we're not going to see that in the main game, so it's just an overview. Um, but as I was saying, with the gates, there's three different ones you can unlock. There are the golden ones, which are for story progression. There's the, the blue crystal ones, which are designed for accessing side quest locations. And then there's the ones that you come through, which just allow you to go back to the uh, Historia Crux to choose things. Um... Now, this next fight is going to be the last fight we'll do on the new game playthrough, and then we're going to switch to our modern one, because this is the last introduction of a mechanic, um, which the cutscenes for do not appear if you go back on a new game plus. So, you know, stand affair, got a fight, let's just, uh, kill it as you do. Why does that thing look like a mix between Daxter and some kind of strange mollusk? Because it's, it's a little, it's a little thing. Cut it. And it's it's dead now. Well, it will be. It, it is dead now. It is dead. There we go. <laughs> and then you have a hula hooping blob of something. Yeah, do you remember when we uh, we were fighting millions of these as Saz and Vanille in uh, Nautilus? That was a fun time. I don't remember much <laughs> about 13. Well, that's why you shouldn't be paying attention to your idiot brother. Hint, hint. I acknowledged your accuracy earlier. Can you let it go now? Never. <laughs> cool, it's turned to crystal. Way to live up to your namesake. It's like, hey, why? Yeah, obviously. So I got a crystal. Oh, look, there's these things like actual spoils. Why have we got monsters in our spoils that you ask? What is all this? What does it mean? Well, we'll have it explained to us right now. What? The monster turned into crystal. Servant of time, daughter of chaos. Unto the world unseen, the untamed you guy. <laughs> what do you know? Oh, oh, hey! Wait, what do you mean? Yeah. Guy Don't poke my head! Your power over monsters, Koopo! Oh, oh he's a Koopo! I don't know why I find that so cute. Lightning head monsters fighting with her in battle. You can do the same, Koopo. <laughs> okay. The this power. Can you show me how it works? I want to learn how to protect myself. Might as well start now. So, yeah, you might be wondering, like, well, we've only got Sarah and Noel as our party members. Who's going to make the third one? Well, uh, the newest feature in 13.2 is that you can basically obtain monsters to fight for you as your third party member. Um, each monster has a certain particular role um, and abilities that you can also level up using a Crystarium just the same way. It's pretty much like a Final Fantasy version of Pokemon, and it's pretty great. <laughs> so um, you can have up to like three at once, um, and you can mix up the uh, configurations of your party, like the paradigms when you put these through. So I've got a Ravager here uh, with this Wurg thing, which will only do magic attacks, and the other one I got is a Medic. Um, so you set your paradigms based on what monsters you have available in your current deck, and... You can, as I say in the previous episodes, you can choose, is it for like wide attacks, is it for what else? Um, it's pretty nice. It's a nice little extra bit of customization. Now, another thing that monsters do when they're fighting with you is this extra thing called Feral Link, is that when they do enough attacks and they're fighting alongside you all the time, uh, they'll be able to unleash a special ability. Sometimes it can be like a massive damaging thing, sometimes it can buff your entire party, sometimes it's it does different effects depending on the particular monster that you're doing. Um, and there's a lot of monsters you can go for, which all do different effects, so we'll just fight with this a bit until this uh, guy gets it. So you press the button when it's full. And then you just have to follow the button combinations, like this. And then he'll do an attack. And the quicker you do those combinations, the higher your synchronization, which means it will be more effective. Um, so the higher that is, the better it will be. Now, because we're going to be doing New Game Plus, I have, you know, 
dozens and dozens of these monsters, and I'm going to be choosing the best ones to accompany me, which I'll show you in a sec. And these things are stupidly powerful. I could literally just have Sarah and Null do nothing, and they could kill the game <laughs> for me. But wow. I, I will still try. So bear with me a sec while we finally switch over to the new Game Plus playthrough, and I'll show you what's new and why we're so broken. <laughs> this sounds a lot like the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series, where... Um, unlike the Pokemon games where you're the Pokemon trainer, uh, you actually are Pokemon and you can, uh, when you beat Pokemon in the dungeons, they will ask to sometimes join your party because, hey, they think you're badass and they can get stronger by following with you. Yeah, but <clears throat> none of them really have things like this. I've got Omega, a giant robot that can kill everything. I have Armando. What the hell? Is that, which does lots of things. And then I have Harry the Lizard who will take all the brunt of my attacks for me. <laughs> Yeah, Wait, could... did you name did you name these or are these three names? No, no, I named them. <laughs> <laughs> Omega is the original name, but I chose Armando and Harry because <laughs> I thought it'd be I nice. ask why you chose Armando? Because <laughs> I, I thought it was good. Uh, Noel has got okay. the best weapon, uh, the Odin blade. Sarah's got the Odin bolt, which is also her best weapon. Um, which means we'll pretty much be able to defeat most of the fights in a couple of hits, so we can focus on story and good times. All right then. Yeah, uh, Harry was one of the first monsters I captured and leveled up to maximum, and he's such a good sentinel. <laughs> like, he can block almost anything, it's crazy. Looks like we're getting overlap from another reality. Atlas has disappeared into another world, or another time, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that would explain the paradox. It's, this is a thing that shouldn't be there. Mm hmm. Um, so I should point out that on these maps, like, this is the Brescia Ruins Gate uh, area. Uh, which you might remember is part of the frozen lake that we were in in 13. <laughs> These are ruins from that. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So they're not frozen anymore? Uh, they're partially frozen, but these are ruins that are elsewhere on the lake, so they're just quite, like, nearby. We only went through <laughs> a portion of them when we were in 13. Um, but you can access these same maps, but at different time periods. So there's at least two other variations of the Brescia ruins uh, with different, like, weather layouts and different objectives and different side quests and stuff. There's a lot of stuff in this game. Um, and stuff that you can do in one time period can also affect the other, so if you um, break, di like, if, for example, Atlas here, he broke down something earlier, um, and if you go to another time period, then things like that will be broken there as well after he breaks it and stuff like that. It's quite cool. It's quite clever. Oh, I, I like interactives. Yeah, I mean, it's Stuff it's like very that, basic. Where you, where you do one thing and then two more changes. Yeah, but it's like it's very basic because of how big stuff full of stuff the game is. But um. Well, of course. I mean, it, what year did this game come out in? It's like 2012, I think. No. Two choices. I'm trying to think, because Lightning Returns was 2014. Yeah, this was 2012, 13 too. Okay. Because I remember, but I remember this was like the I bought this and the collector's edition strategy guide. Um. What does Mog think? <laughs> Mog, do you think we should do it? <laughs> um, <Football. laughs> Wait a minute. Does that mean you trust me? Or you don't want to make that decision? Answer the question, Sarah. Uh, but yeah, I remember right. buying 13.2 and the Collector's Edition Strategy Guide was one of the first things I bought when I actually started getting money when I was at university, so <laughs> I remember it well. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, and now we also need to introduce you to... Uh, this stunning person. <laughs> what the hell is that? Hello! Seen that big old giant? Where'd he come from? Someone sure wasted their time and hard earned money making something that big. I don't like seeing materials go to waste like that, but hey, Chocolina? <laughs> Chocolina! I open up my shop. That's what I can do! Yay! So Chocolina basically has a shop. Um, and she will appear mysteriously in every single time period and area that you visit in the game. The reasons for that? They are explained, but I don't know if we're going to explain it in this particular game. It's fully explored in Lightning Returns afterwards, you know but... Yeah, she uh, she just kind of follows you around, she can sell you shit, and she's also quite funny, so... Keep an eye out for her, because she will appear everywhere. Um, let's check some Voiced by Julian Nathanson. Yeah. Or Julie Nathanson. What have you been in? Right, so I need to go to the right-hand side. 
<laughs> now, a thing to point out is that in this New Game Plus area, there, um, whenever you're doing interactions like this, like I'm going to go mess with Atlas's controls to make him weaker. In the initial playthrough, when you do stuff like this, you have to like fix like a time puzzle. Um, usually like by doing like a kind of a clock puzzle or going through like a certain number of steps to do stuff but because I've already completed them and then earned the bonus for it they don't appear so I can just do it straight away so luckily you will not have to see me struggle with that because those puzzles are stupidly hard <laughs> Hey no you did the computers even though you're from a time where computers don't exist <laughs> I just say I'm sitting that that always bothers me when you have a person who's not supposed to have had any contact with this stuff. Is like, oh hey, I I'm not bothered by this at all. Da 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 da, -da. done. Uh, I, I'll I'll give Noah the benefit of the doubt. I like him. He's like, oh, you can do it. It's fine. I mean, it looked as though it was just like you touch it and it works anyway, so it doesn't matter. Mm. Now, um, another thing. There's a lot to talk about in this episode. Um, if you don't. Uh, activate those controls and make Atlas weaker, you can fight him at full strength, but on a first time playthrough he will wipe you out instantly. But, if you come back here and then wipe him out at full strength, um, it will lead to something in this game that are called paradox endings, and they're basically, at major points in the game, like certain boss battles or certain decisions, you can choose to do something that doesn't progress the story, and you will get a paradox ending, which is basically, this is what would have happened if you didn't do the pro correct choice, and then the game ends. Um, so one of these things here is that if I beat Atlas at full strength, uh, the ramifications of that, because we're not supposed to be able to do that in the true timeline, is that um, it causes more of Atlas's like kind to seep through to the world and then destroy it in a giant war. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. Um, hmm. There's about eight of them in the game. Um, oh look! Chuckling is outside here as well, just because I guess she is. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of them in the game. Um, there is one that you that you have the option to see just by playing through the game um, normally, and I'll point out what when that happens. But all the other ones are completely optional; that they don't make it obviously clear what that's what's going to happen. Look, she's out here too. But you were in okay. there. You, you were in there. <coughs> why? Why are you? Why here? Maybe she's like the the, the, the Lutess. Uh, am I saying that right? Lutess. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's like the Lutess twins, just appearing. <laughs> Appetitive. <laughs> yes, British Shepherd. Yes. Um, Tales of the Steria actually has something similar to the paradox ending. Uh, Sorry, I just wanted to say, Harry, I want to wish him luck. Look at him go. Wee. <laughs> okay, that's a damn. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> Damn! Yeah, I win. <laughs> that was piss, okay. Um, but there's, there's an, the main enemy of the game is the Lord of Chaos, or the King of Chaos, I can't even remember. Lord of, Lord of Calamity. Um, and um, if you fight him at a certain point, because if you go too far at a certain point in the game, you will find him. You're not supposed to be able to, and if you somehow, by God's green earth, Beat him before you before you have to um, purify the main person of the game. It just you see the party just kind of sitting in on in, and all of a sudden darkness comes out and just covers the entire land. So like, yeah, you may have beat the Lord of Calamity, but you fucked up everything in the process. So good job, guys. You suck. Yeah, it, it's pretty much exactly what this game does with some of these alternate options. Um, some of the alternate endings are quite funny, but some of them are also really dis like depressing. But either way, we win. Perfect! You did it! Perfect! Yeah! Uh, Get your big rock ass out of here! And that is a big rock ass, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I win. I don't. I don't think. I don't think anybody I, knows what you said I, right like, there. <laughs> The target time for that fight is three minutes. Like, if you beat it under the three minutes, you get a five-star rank. I beat it in 13 seconds. Oh, baby. Well, I did it, so I fixed the problem, because I defeated Atlas, which means that, oh, well, then if he's defeated, then he's not here anymore, which means he's not fucking everything up, so now everything is going back to how it should be. Oh, baby. Yeah, boy. Woohoo. So now I can now access... Look at us rebuilding shit. 
yeah, it's like I can access those higher areas now, and that's gone away because that was never there, and oh, it's it's all good. Yay! I wonder what caused the paradox effect. This is just a theory, but I think there might be someone out there derailing history. Kai with the purple hair. That's why Atlas and these gates are appearing out of nowhere. All right. Is that why lightning disappeared? Does Noel have any ideas? Is that why lightning disappeared? Could be responsible for lightning disappearing? Could be. You remember your sister coming home, right? You have memories from before everything got twisted. But why only me? That's the question. Yeah, they'll answer that in the near the end of the game. Right, uh, Alyssa, while we were doing that, she wanted us to try and find a gravestone. And there it is! It's a pretty big one. Mm -hmm. And this bit also makes Alyssa a bit less of a ditz. There's an epitaph. Here lie the innocent victims of chance, cast out and cast down. May their souls find the path that leads them home. Cast out. These must be victims of the purge. Oh no, does that mean that um, Hope's mommy's imparted for that? This is it. Probably. This is the place. Oh, oh poor baby. I thought it might be. But that's not my name. Then whose is it? Kobo. It's my friend's. She died here, running from the purge. <laughs> And me? I'm one of those who survived. Wow. So why were you looking for your name on a Five gravestone? Ago, the entire town of Bodum. It was wiped out by the army. I know, I was there. I was there, visiting my friend. Then everything went to hell. Mm hmm We ran and hid with the other fugitives. But just as the troops were pulling out, that's when the ceiling of our hiding place collapsed. Hmm. It's like, what do you even say to that? Ever since then, I've had the same dream. I'm trapped under rubble. It's dark. I'm in pain. I can barely breathe. Somebody hug this chick before she has a panic attack. Thing I know. I rise out of my body. And I'm standing before this grave. And the name written on the stone. It's mine. There's an awful lot of names on there. After seeing that image so many times, I started to think that maybe I did die back then. And the life I'm living now is just... Uh oh, that was dramatic much. I had to say, why are you flapping around? Well, no, I'll sort it out. Boop. Well, <laughs> you seem real to me. <laughs> Short, sweet, and to the point. Way to go, Silver, you little bastard. Even if they all forget, I never will. And neither will I. I Interesting little thing, that little uh, exchange there with Alyssa is, um... Yeah, there's a little good twist about that later on. Okay. Yeah, but then you would have still been under Falsy Law, Sarah. That's not really... I'd say you did kind of a net good thing at the end, if you take all that into consideration. Can we ever give back what we've taken? But what do I know? Hmm. Yeah, so that's a thing. Yeah, mm. so Alyssa is heavily damaged, which probably explains why she's so kooky. Um... <laughs> Hey, look, it's stop raining! Oh! Oh my god! But now, as Null said in the, um... In... Back in Bodom, we need to have an artifact to open up a gate and go somewhere else! Just like he says there. I didn't even need to explain <laughs> it, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> Where should we look? Well, I think that we should probably look for the places that the game's camera told us they would be. Let's go there! No, what camera? Uh, you're not supposed to know that. 
Uh, lightning told me, uh, it's a camera obscura, which means you can't see it. Ooh. It's like, why? It's like, we know you can talk now. Why are you just not talking? <laughs> Hi, Alyssa. Are you still being sad? Thank you. I'll head back after uh, kind of, I guess. Forgive me. I was just so glad it wasn't my name on there. <laughs> my name's not on there. What are you talking about? I just say he's like, what are you? What? Wait, my, my name's on there. Wait, what? What? What, huh? what the fuck? I, I, I wasn't even born yet. What the hell? Over there, Ma. Kaboom! I found a hidden thing. Ooh. I found a special. We did. Nice, <laughs> where is the gate? The game says as it marks the objective on the map, so I know exactly where it is. <laughs> Hello, Chocobo. <laughs> Chocoboco. I want to ride my chocobo all day. Do, do, do. <laughs> yes, Prompto is one of my favorite characters because he's adorable. He's also a derp and a fool and a silly and a dumb and nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a derp and a silly and a fool are always the most adorable things to deal with. You know, they may great. not be the smartest, but they're adorable. Yeah, it's great. I was playing through the um, the free. Uh, Moogle Chocobo Carnival thing that they that you can download, um, and Noctis basically goes to this carnival in Altitia with the, uh, the Moogles and the Chocobos, and you have this little, like, fox spirit thing called Carbuncle following you around, and there's one of the side quests in it to get uh, these points and stuff for the carnival is to take pictures, and the the Carbuncle can only communicate via text message on your phone, but every time he sends you a message, he makes like a little squeak, and he says like, "Oh, I love the lighting." I know it's not really prompto, but I tried, and like, oh, way to go, Bobblehead. It's so good. It's free. Oh, is that what the little fox's name is? Carbuncle. Yeah. I say I have only seen him in the training area. I'm like, oh, you're so cute, you're a little Fennec fox. You're adorable. Yeah, he's he's adorable. Um. You should download the free uh, carnival thing. It's just called the holiday pack. You can get it for free. It's so good. Is it still available? I thought it was like a timed thing. No, it's it's completely free and it's still up there. Okay, I will do that later. It's good. All right. Anyway, back to this Final Fantasy. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to fifteen eventually one day. You know, maybe. Um. Oh look, Harry! You're scaring them all. Doesn't matter because they're all just gonna <laughs> blow up and die. So much so that my game lagged. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Good job, my armadillo crocodile thing. He's called Harry! Harry the Lizard! Yeah! <laughs> Harry the Lizard. Is there a story behind that or just because Harry? No, no, I just was going through the list of names and I just saw Harry and I was like, Harry! Yeah! Yes. You're a lizard, Harry. Uh-oh. Uh, um... Sarah. Sarah? Okay. Um... What? Huh? What? Uh, oh, who are you? It's huh? nothing. I'm fine. Sorry, that acid kicked in real hard. Yes. <laughs> it's like I don't buy this. Something's wrong. Okay. Right. Somehow I kind of doubt it's nothing. <laughs> I am so glad someone finally says that because every other game you have a character say, "Oh, I'm fine. It's nothing." Everybody's like, "Oh, okay." It's like <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, but Noel's just like, "No, it, it's not, is it?" <laughs> it's like I'm not gonna. I'm not you taking this right crap. The paradox. And continued on to we did! Time. We did do that, Sarah! But why had these gates appeared? And that's the mystery, isn't it? Who had tangled the timelines? And for what purpose? We still didn't know. Why am I able to fix these temporal anomalies? You're the key of Kresnik. Bend monsters to my will. I have, the, I have the crest of kindness. Why is it coming to me? <laughs> that's an old-ass reference, fellas, you know? God, it's like that, Digimon Season 2, back no, when it was still good. No, that's Season 1. The, the crest. No. That's not, oh, no, no, that was Ken in Season 2. Yeah, you're right, it is 2. Had to say, that was Season 2. Don't, don't, don't contradict me. Come on now. You know better. I'm trying, I get, I thought like the first season had crests as well, but I don't know. They did, they did. Um, the second season actually got rid of the crests as far as actual necklaces. They were more on the Digi eggs for the new Digi Destin. Uh, but do. Ken started as a Digi Destin much earlier than Davis, Yoli, and Cody. So he still had a crest. He just didn't, he just went through his whole little identity crisis because dead brother and all shit. 
I always like and Nils, some I garbage like, with the dark. Scene. I always like how Noel's just trying to be so positive all the time. He's it's such a change from the usual kind of gripe, like oh god, kind of attitude that most of the Final Fantasies have. <laughs> you're just like, eh, no, it's fine. We're just having a good old flying through the timelines, and we're just having a lot of fun. It's all cool. <laughs> He's just so upbeat and happy. I like it. But hey, I won't complain if we do Whee! Whee! Look at me! <laughs> Like, Are we sure he's not he's not completely a new love interest for Sarah? They just click so <laughs> I, I, well. It, I it's got like lots of people thinking that. Are you sure that you really want to go with Snow, Sarah? <laughs> really? I, just, I mean, this guy. I mean, I know he's like from the future, but still, this guy. He's, yeah. he's, he's pretty good. He's cool. He's he's cute, and he clicks, and you guys are like. You know, lock and key. Oh. Fuck when, snow. Wait until snow shows up again. It's gonna be fun. Now, oh grief, shit! <laughs> you just smell the awkward. Not to oh, it's gonna be fun. If I could, I would thank you for what you have accomplished. Why, Lightning? But I can't. Why can't you help us yet? Not just yet. <laughs> Lightning. Pinky, help us! All right, so we did it, and then we unlocked the. uh... The gate for the next location, which will be the one strictly above us. Uh, as you can see from that giant gate matrix, there are a lot of places you can visit, but thankfully we'll be taking most of the middle path. Um, so join us in the next episode where we will return to Grand Pulse, now another five years ahead in the future, now in 10 AF. And that's going to be fun for everyone. We hope. <laughs>